All right, this is going on page 54 when we are done. Okay. So we, yesterday we talked about arithmetic sequences. Today we are talking about geometric sequences. The white papers need to be put away. We are on keep notes. That's put away, not underneath the notes so that you can keep getting it back out. Put it away. All right. So properties of successive terms for geometric sequences. Instead of having a common difference, like arithmetic sequences do, they have a common ratio, which we represent with a lowercase r. So instead of being increasing by a constant amount every time, the amount at which it's increasing changes. It's either going to increase or decrease. Just like with arithmetic, we have um, these two formulas here. And if there's only one that you know, the second one is the best one to know because it'll kind of work for everyone, okay? Put that stuff away and focus on what we are doing. Okay, so g sub g rho, and we have, so we have g instead of a. This is the initial value. Just like it was before, except it was a sub zero. R is the common ratio. And G sub K is the kth term, which, yes, still sounds very strange, but we can understand what it means at least. So, just so remember, arithmetic sequences, they behave like a linear function. Geometric sequences behave like exponential functions, but they are not continuous. So exponential functions, we can either have exponential increase or decrease. Those are definitely not new to you. So again, behaves like them, but we're not connecting the dots, just like we wouldn't connect the dots in real life. So like I said over there, increasing geometric sequences increase by a larger amount each step. And if it's decreasing, then it'll be a smaller amount each step. But that's what makes them have that curve-like behavior. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at this example the graph here. We're going to make a little t-chart here. We're going to have n and g sub n. It's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's just draw that. Okay. So when I go to substitute stuff in here, can I go ahead and multiply the 8 times the 1 half before I start? 100% no. And if you do that at any point on any question, I'm not looking at any of the rest of it. You get zero credit because you have zero hope if you think that that is a result. If it was, why the heck wouldn't we just start with four, right? Makes no sense. So you have to know your order of operations. So when I substitute in zero, one half to the zero power is what? One. One times eight is eight. I substitute in 1, 1 half to the first power is what? 1 half. 1 half times 8 is 4. I substitute in 2, 1 half squared is what? 1 fourth. And 8 times 1 fourth is 2. Okay, so then when I have g sub 3, it's going to be 8 times 1 half to the third power. What is 1 half to the third power? 1 eighth. So this is 8 times 1 over 8. And what do I get? 1. G sub 4 is going to be 8 times 1 half to the 4th power. What is 1 half to the 4th power? 1 over 16. So what is my answer? 1 half. Okay. Super basic math there. All right. So now we are going to graph these. So at 0, I am at 8, at 1, I am at 4, 2, I am at 2, 3, I'm at 1, 4, I'm at 1 half. And so you can see how it's behaving like a decreasing exponential function. Do we connect the dots? No, we do not. What questions do you have at this point? Okie dokie. So, for example six, 
We are going to determine if the sequences to be geometric. If yes, identify the common ratio. Um, I kind of wish that I had worked all this out before I made the copies because I know that there is not enough room, but we're going to do the best that we can. We are going to do the horizontal way here again because I think that's going to help us the most. So when I do this, this is n, this is s sub n, and we're just going to do 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, so when I substitute in 0, what is 0 squared? 0. 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. I substitute in 1. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, right? So on the worksheet that I went ahead and gave you yesterday, at the top it asks, is this, are these uh, sequences arithmetic, geometric, or neither? And so if, if this is, that's not what this question is asking. It's just asking, is it geometric or not? But if I was asked that type of question, I would always, I would check arithmetic first because it's kind of the easiest. And then I would go and check geometric and then go from there, right? Uh, but you can kind of do it in any order you want, I guess, but you'd have to check both. So instead of taking the differences and subtracting them, like we did for arithmetic, we are looking for a ratio. When you hear ratio in math, what should that make you think of? Okay, yes, I will take that because the ratio does give you slope. What else should it make you think of? It should make you think of a few things, really, but like how do you write a ratio? As a fraction, yeah, that's what I, I didn't want to. So ratio to fraction, and that's how you get your slope and stuff, so that's good. So just like if this was arithmetic, we'd do 3 minus 0, but we're not subtracting, we're finding a ratio. So I would do 3 divided by, or 3 over 0, and 3 over 0 gives me what? Undefined. Okay? Then I put 12 over 3, and what do I get? 4. Okay? Are those two things the same? No. So I don't need to bother to go on because if the first two aren't the same, it really doesn't matter what the rest happens because I don't have a common ratio. So my answer here then is not geometric. Ooh, I didn't actually spell it right. Not geometric. No common ratio. We agree with that? We good? Okay. So then on the next one, we're going to do n and s sub n. We get 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so when I substitute in 0, when I substitute in 0, that's going to give me 0 minus 1 is negative 1. What is 2 to the negative 1 power? 1 half. 1 half times 4 is 2. I substitute in 1. 1, time, one minus 1 is 0. What's 2 to the 0 power? 1 times 4 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 to the first power is 2 times 4 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 4 is 16, okay? So then I'm going to look for my ratio, not my differences, right? So I put 4 over 2, and that gives me 2. I put 8 over 4, what does that give me? 2. What do I get here? 2. Is this geometric? Yes. So then I can say this is geometric. Geometric, that's an error there. Geometric R equals 2. While I'm thinking about it, up here, oh, wait, never mind. Didn't even have that. But what's another way to pronounce arithmetic? 
arithmetic. But they're actually two different words spelled the exact same way. Okay, so I want you to think about this. You do some, you would do some geometry, but the the sequence is geometric. You can do arithmetic, but the sequence is arithmetic. You see, does that make sense? They actually kind of one's a, I guess a, I don't know. I'm not an English teacher, but uh, one's something and the other one's something else. <laughs> the, these are adjectives that are explaining what kind of sequence you have. The other one, I don't know, noun, verb, or both of those. I'm not teaching English, so for a very good reason. Okay, so then let's look at C. I already have that out there, so I'm just looking at the ratio. What is this ratio? Three. What is this ratio? Not three. <laughs> That's really all that matters, right? Not three. Um, but we can put that one in this. But it's two-thirds, right? And while I'm thinking about that with fractions, let me go back up and show you something else here. Uh, I should have said it kind of up here, but yesterday we got one half and something, I don't know. And I said, what is it? And somebody said, it's one half or 0.5. And I said, oh, hold on, absolutely not. It is one half. It is 1,000% not 0.5. I would 1,000% never change any of these fractions to decimals, okay? That makes no sense. Don't do it, all right? These are fractional things. So two-thirds is just two-thirds. Don't even care whether it's a decimal. And all that really matters is that it's not three, right? So do I need to go any farther? Nope. So I can just say not geometric. No common ratio. All right. So then here, what does this give me? Negative two? No. One half. Good. You have to do the second over the first. And then this is negative one half. So then I just keep going. Negative one half, negative one half. Remember, even if you can tell by looking that it's going to continue, you still have to show that. That is your evidence. Nobody cares what you can do in your head. Okay? So is this geometric? Yes. Geometric R equals negative one half. Okay? What questions do we have? We good on that? Ratio, not a difference. Okay, so on example seven, it says let g sub n be a geometric sequence. So it's straight up telling us that that's what we're supposed to use. We have g sub one, we have r, we need to find an expression for g sub n, and then use it to find g sub four. So very much like what we did yesterday, we have to come up with a little equation that works for everything, and then we use it to find something else. And like I said yesterday, it is very helpful in you remembering, not necessarily memorizing, but learning and remembering these formulas and equations if we just write down what it is every single time. So my g sub n formula is g sub k times r. Now I'm going to put r in parentheses. I know that's not how it's written up there, but I think if you're consistent with that, that's helpful, especially if r is negative, so you don't, don't, you don't make it look like you're subtracting something and then you end up confusing yourself. We're just going to put r in parentheses um, to the n minus k Then over here, I'm going to say, all right, to come up with g sub n, I'm going to make this my g sub k, and then I have r. So when I put it in here, g sub n is going to equal, what is g sub k? 12 times r, which is 2, to the n minus, what is k? 1 power. Okay, there's my little formula. Can I clean it up and put that as 24 to the n minus 1 power? Can I multiply the 12 times the 2 right now? No. No. Okay. So now I'm going to do g sub 4. That's equal to 12 times 2 to the 4 minus 1 power. So what is 4 minus 1? So I need 2 to the third power. What's 2 to the third power? 8. So this is 12 times 8. So g sub 4 equals what? 96. 
You have to know your multiplication facts. You have to know how to handle negative exponents. You have to know how to square fractions. You have to be able to do all that with confidence. If you don't understand any of that stuff, you need to go find some review videos because I do not have time to reteach basic math that you should already be really good at. Okay, let's look at example eight. Several terms of the geomet geometric sequence ooh, is shown. So especially when they give me terms and they tell me it's geometric, that's nice because that means I don't have to go check it. They're telling me this is geometric, handle it as a geometric sequence. Now, I've already said, and I'm going to restate it on the other side of the notes, that if you only know one of the formulas, the second one is the best one to know. But if, if you do know both of them and you have the initial term, you can use the other one. If you don't know it, that's fine. You can still do this and even use the initial term and your, everything ends up being the same. So the other, the other version of that formula, g sub n equals a sub 0 times r to the nth power. And if you think about it, it's really not that much different than the other one. Because if I made this a sub k, what would k be? 0, right? So if this is a sub k, it would be 0. So then I'd have the n minus 0, which is just n. So it's basically the exact same thing. That's why I'm saying, like, even if you use it, and if you use the initial term in the other formula, it's going to end up looking identical to what we're doing here. So do I know my initial term? Oh, I put a. My goodness, that should be a g. Sorry if that's what. Goodness gracious. Do you understand why they're different? Yes. Okay. Wouldn't make any sense here for that to be an a. So what is my initial term? What is g sub 0? 8. Okay. And then I need r. How do I find r? Okay. I've got to make a ratio. And because it's geometric, does it matter which two I choose? No, as long as they're successive, like I can't choose 8 and um, 1 or anything like that. But I can choose these two. Is R going to be 2 or 1 half? 1 half. I know that for two reasons. First of all, we've got to do the second over the first, just like when we subtract. The other thing is this is a decreasing function, so your R would have to be less than 1, or the initial term would have to be 0. I mean, there's other ways to do it. I mean, negative. Okay. So now we need to find our expression. So that first part of that, g sub n, that's g sub 0, which is 8, times 1 half to the nth power. Everybody okay with that? Then we need to find g sub 10. So g sub 10 is equal to 8 times 1 half to the tenth power. Can I simplify that and make that four to the tenth power? No, not unless you want to get zero credit, right? So I need to take one half to the tenth power. When I do this, that's not that big of a deal. I need I'm going to do it on my fingers. So I know it's one over whatever two to the tenth is, right? So I got two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight. 256, 512, 1024. Right, 1024. So that means that is 8 over 1024. Now I need to reduce this without a calculator because this very, very easily could be a non calculator question. I got a couple options. I could just take 1024 and see if I can divide it by 8, but what some people end up doing is losing the fact that you have a fraction and be 1000% wrong on what your answer is. My suggestion on any time you reduce a fraction is don't try and go all in and reduce it in one step unless you just automatically know what it is. I mean, if it's 8 over 16, hopefully we don't have to do it in steps. We know it's one half. Here, you probably don't just know what it is, and that's totally fine. I don't either. So I would, the way I would handle this situation without a calculator, is they're both even. So I'm going to divide them both by 2, and I'll get 4 over 512. They're still both even, so I'm going to divide them again. 2 over 256. Then I'm going to divide them again, and I'm going to get 1 over 128. And then I'm not stressing out over, you know, what's my, you know, largest common multiple and all that kind of stuff. Um, so clearly, it would have divided evenly, but what I, was, what I was trying to say at the beginning is, if you take 1024 and do your long division and divide it by 8, there will be somebody, probably more than one somebody's, 
but then put the answer as 128 and not 1 over 128. Because you were so focused on dividing, you lost the fact that you had a fraction. You with me on that? So sometimes I think it's safer to leave it as a fraction so you don't mix up where your numbers go. And then that's it. d sub 10 is equal to 1 over 128. All right, any questions at all? Because I use, that's a very good question. So his question was, how come I raise it to the n and not the n minus k? Because I used that other formula that didn't have k in it. Does that make sense to you? If, if you have it, it's kind of like y equals mx plus b. If you have the y-intercept, go for it. If you don't, then don't. And that's why we did it on the other one. But if, remember, if you only know one formula, okay, so if we only know one formula and we have g sub n is equal to g sub k times r to the n minus k power, okay? So if, that, if you only know one, you have this one, right? And so with this one, I can use any of those points that I want. Totally fine, right? I can say a sub 3 is 1, and I can use that as my a sub k, right? So now let's do this same, let's use this formula, and let's go ahead and still use this, okay? So I know then that, sorry, wait, that g sub 0 equals 8. So do we agree with that? And so then let's say that we're going to make that our, just like we've been labeling, we're going to say, okay, this one is g sub k, okay? Just like we did the one above it, right? You okay with that? So that when I substitute it in here, g sub n is equal to g sub k, which is 8, times r, which is 1 half, to the n minus k power. What is k? Zero. And so that's why it ends up being that, even if I use that formula. Does that make sense to you? And that's why this one looks a little different, because basically you don't have to, you're just kind of leaving out that part, and it just makes it that. But if that, again, if that, if you're worried about getting confused with that, just use this formula, and then it just naturally happens, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay? Very good question. Anything else? Good deal. So we are going to, I think we're just going to stop here. Um, I knew we weren't going to finish, so, but we are not going to finish this until Wednesday, all right? Because Monday we're going to review for the test, Tuesday is the test, and then Wednesday we'll finish. This stuff is not on the test. So if you haven't even touched that worksheet until then, that is totally fine, okay? We okay with all that? Yes, sir. This goes on 54. We're going to put it on the same page as the other one.